Greetings to all the participants. Honorable Minister TGL Mintuama, respected principal Pilar Miliana, panelists and resource persons to today's state level webinar on climate change, a bring concern for Mizoram. My name is Evanant Mangaizwali. I will be your host for today's sessions. Before we proceed further into our program, I would like to invite our respected principal, Pilar Mingliana, to give a welcome speech. Good morning, everyone. I salute you all. Today, we are very lucky to have a webinar of this kind. The Geography Department of Government and Faculties could organize this important webinar, and I congratulate this department. And today, we are very, very lucky as we could have Honorable Minister, Law and Judicial Transport, Environment, Forest and Climate Change Department as inaugurator. He is the only begotten son of Gav Mencham Paikolis who could become a legislator, legislator and a minister. So we are very proud of him. And I will come today to Tijelan Tuanga. And I also welcome source persons, Dr. Van Lalten Puya, Assistant Professor, Government Eyes All North College, Gabriel Sandama, Assistant Professor, Government Jet and Kima College, Ram Engmoi, Assistant Professor, Government Trang Bana College. Dr. Lorin Puya Wang Chia, Assistant Professor, Gaf Men Hathiel College. Dr. C. Ming Sang Zuala, Assistant Professor, Gaf Men Hathiel College. Mr. C. Zirung Hak Ngura, Assistant Professor, Gaf Men Champai College. And the Department of Geography, Gaf Men Champai College. And all other participants. Thank you. Thank you so much, our principal, Pilan Miliana. Now, I would like to mention that we are very fortunate as we have here with us today, our Honorable Minister TJ Langunduanga, Minister of Environment, Forest and Climate Change Department. May I now invite him, our Honorable Minister, to give us an inaugural speech. Department of Government of High College Principal Zomtak Pupi Langliana Department of Geography HOD U El Kuma Varte U Kedal Matsuana Department of Geography Government of High College When a resource person Om Zong Zong Te le kan thu ngai thatu zong zong te invain chi bai ule some high college malak na state level webinar on climate change poi hot ani hi lomom kati le maya he webinar a tel tu ra min som wang hian kalom tak zeta some high college sa zira he college sa tanga graduate kania 
abik takin mindu sak eh m32 le voina e etian kan hun man chho lai thenga min ngai poi mo thin tu kan zir tur tu te chunga po kian lom thu ka soya voin webinar hi kan hlok tlan pui nge ka be se ani le hei voina climate change thu pui mangin webinar ne turania hela hian kan hri tlan thep angin climate change hi mizo tong chuan sikle sa in thak danglam ti in asoi thei mai ome he subject hi thil thar ani tolowa mizo te po in kan mel hret in kan sui lar chho ta le a sikle sa in thak hi kan tong chho me bok ani mizo ramin climate change hi at halo lam zong in ti mai la kan tong chho me ani ti lan tir tu then khatte han soi ma sai la kang mei kan hriat lan angin akum telin khua aro chotel tela hei wang hian thalain ram kang na satak a then pha ta fo maya kumina phei chuan mizoram hun hrang hranga kum dang zong a in ram kang ana sa a sarkar poin a chhui chuak tu tur le switching to to special investigation team te po adin hiala tu na hian report po anon submit fel to a atu langin sarkar chuan ma ale zel don ani a dot le chuan lui tui akang chat kan hri thu angin kumin hian lui tui tam tak kang chatin khopui lian zual te na kan tui lak na nar te po kang chat mai thei din mun hlom taka anding hial ani kha hei hi climate change mong te zinga apoi perpol ani ome nishing te tui in tur mai ba ka thai le ran chomna ta na tui kan lak te ango wangin kan fai rel bel a hol theng rok ani adot le chuan ruat tui atlem chorwalin kumin Hian ruat tui tlak dan te an ena kumtin ruat tui tlak dan an en nu hian at liam tiel tiel ang in asoy thea kumin pei hi chuan ruat tui hian at lak chin dan pa ngay apalo na sa sri lea heti ang ani chuan chal lo teng tur hi ahu pu om kup ang le heti ang a sikle sa Mumal lawa hiyan na natisang sang dengi scriptay fast le til dang dang na nate at luar do le niin mitiam ten ang soy bok ane kan soy tak tihi climate change wangalo om ania kan ramat climate change om tier two chan bulpui berju lang ramlo ne kan ti te le maso na sang sang kalkong le te Building sak tle til dang dang te le mising duam na awanga kan ramo kan ti cereu te le putley tena kan ting le mau te kan ti cereu na hi ani Forest Survey of India report nu berakan kan ramo ramo za somriat panga point pali pakat o mangin alanga masela Ram ngotha, very dense forest le, moderately dense forest. Te belkhob ju, zasom ni le pariyat poin. Pah ni paruk, chow, an ni ah. Adang ju, hu le, hil om peo, peo na. Hing om peo, peo na. Open forest, an ni ah. Isora ma hiyan, climate change, nodal department hi, Environment, Forest and Climate Change Department hi ania. Department hi an ma laringin State Action Plan on Climate Change siyamin project rang rang ang kalpuya at lang puye hantar lang ila. Masabi ra chuan si Fakua Aizol Division Saitual District to Climate Resilient Community a langin 
community development rang rang eco park cmt ruwa tui da khol na plastic tui sem cmt led bulb cmt safety le supply reserve ven him le ready made tulhas thuk le stof cmt tui na ti pun na spring set recharge te tho ani a adot le chuan coffee demonstration plantation hi reek ailong le leng khua not one life high division noya te pilot project atana siam ani adot le chuan awareness campaign muntam taka ne ani a leaflet te pamphlet kan ti te po heng line department rang rang udnpa phe agriculture horticulture science and, and technology dmnr te ne tangtlang in siam thin ani a then training workshop rang rang state national international thing in nei ani thin bok ani heng kan soita ka hian the german agency for international cooperation le international center for integrated mountain development he technical facilitators ania eng po ni sela voina climate change chungchang state level webinar ne ani hi kalom leya head climate change subject hian anga event tu te le ngai ven lem lo tu te kan zawa ya viral bel le dam ko chua na ahong ani ti hria ila mi puite mi timeng tu le hril hretu lo ni sela mi thiam tak tak thu pui hrang hrang ron sei tur te po in voina hian mi pui nun zir tir mai ba ka ataka thu khowa department tenen po in fin chuatlang zel turin voina hian ka som cheuni le hei voina kun thatak mai le thilu tak mai subject poi mo taka webinar ka han nei tura hian climate change a bring concern for mizoram webinar hi lom takin ka hong e kan sei belle du chu hla hian voin kan program a hrang hrang kan ena min hria thiam na kan ngen du a program lo ti lak lo deu le ma han lak ngal mai tur chi han mo deu te amo wang in atluan in chak tak chung le in paper present te ngai tha chak tak chung in kan ob tuan thei don lo mela ngai ya min lo hria thiam na voina hian kan deal tel ngal bok ani e kalome thank you so much sir our honorable our honorable minister dj lalitwanga we are very grateful for your presence keeping behind your busy schedule and making time for today's program thank you so much now let's invite associate professor elko mavarte HOD Department of Geography to highlight some keynotes to today's webinar. Thank you, Miss. And good morning, everyone. At this moment, I want to extend my heartiest greetings to uh, all participants of the present webinar. And I'm really thankful to the participants. In this webinar, we expect to learn 
in depth from the respectable learned geographers about the problems faced by the whole world. Like all other parts of the globe, the problems accrued from the change of climate have become a brink concern even for our state. As the whole world focuses on how to tackle COVID-19, environmental degradation is still continuing, reducing biological diversity and the general health of our environment. The world population continues to rise. Economic growth remains extricably linked to the using levels of the greenhouse gas emission. And this continues to rise. The problem is that we have only one habitable planet and by any means, we have to take care of this uh, only one planet. We are all in the front line to overcome the challenge to fight against the climate crisis. Protecting and restoring our natural environment. We need to detach economic growth from unlimited use of our natural resources. Rational use of our natural resources is a must for our future. All this is for the interest of our health, our well being, our survival, and for our future generations. While we talk about the problems of the climate change, one should not ignore about the optimistic side of this change. Let me share my experience during uh, my lifespan of 60 years so far. The seasons which I experienced during my childhood are no longer in order of sequence. Seasons of a year, about 20 years back, like summer and winter, spring and autumn now have different characteristics. The different rainy seasons like uh, to, airua, etc., changes their uh, period of occurrences. And temperatures and the amount of rainfall in the same seasons have changed. Due to change of such climatic factors, uh, the type of agricultural and horticultural products have changed. Jackfruit and orange, etc., which were never found in the Champai area about 20 years back, are now success successfully cultivated. While fighting against the problems, I also want to encourage our researchers to find ways and means to cope with the suggestions of the geographical phenomena. This pandemic period is a high time to change our perception of economic growth, change our ways and move in a different directions. It is a high time to think carefully that the devastating effect of climate change and the loss of our natural environment. A new paradigm is necessary, a change which might affect those which are relatively vulnerable. During this transition, we have to ensure that the vulnerable ones are supported. Change will be just a matter of time or there will be no change at all. Every findings of researchers and decisions are matters that affect our studies. Well, with that, I shall conclude my speech. Thank you all.
you so much, Associate Professor Elko Mavarte, Head of Department, Department of Geography, uh, Government Sampai College. And now here is our speaker joining us from Isol North College, Dr. Vanla Chanpuya, Assistant Professor, Government Isol North College. Before we invite him, I would like to state a brief introduction about him. Sir, Dr. Vanla Chanpuya, he has done his PhD from Mizoram University. His topic is dynamic of land degradation in Puyrini, Mizoram, Puyrini Watershed, Mizoram. He have a PG diploma in disaster management. He have been a visiting faculty at Ikfa University, Durtang, Aizol during the year 2016 to 17. He have participated as a coordinator and secretary in several workshop training conferences conducted by Government Aizol North College. He have presented in national and international level seminars for more than 10 times. And he have also published three times each in peer reviewed journals and edited books. Currently, he is an assistant coordinator IQSC at Government Isol North College from the year 2017 up to today. And he is also currently an executive member uh, Geographic, uh, Geography Association of Mizoram from the year 2020 up to today. Now, uh, if you're ready, sir, we would like to, I would like to invite Dr. Vanla Chanpuya to present his topic. Sir, are you there? Yes, yes, miss. More ready. Thank you. Thank you for your nice introduction. And I'm not, as you know, I'm not as a comment in reality, but anyway, it gave me a challenge for my future. Thank you, Ms. Walte. Then first of all, I'd like to thank to the principal and the organizing team for giving me this opportunity to have a presentation in the first session of your uh, esteemed webinar, state level webinar. So before I proceed to the, my topic, then I'd like to highlight the first about the theme of this seminar. As mentioned by the HOD, uh, Sarkuma, is one of the most interesting and the consequential topic for the middleman to the high officials, highest officials, maybe the politicians also. And because we're experiencing a mild disaster, not only uh, hazards in climate change and its consequences in Mizoram. So due to the ignorance or neglected, only a few people give attention and never prioritize as a whole by the, as a people. But what I would like to say is that it is already very serious and will be extremely challenging for the near future in this remote corner of Mizoram, uh, like the other countries. Okay, so I think it's better to share my slide. I'll try to share my slide. Yes, I hope it's visible. Yes, sir. Sir, it's visible. Okay, thank you. So, as seen in the slide, then my topic will be land degradation, its consequences in Mizoram. Uh, today, I'll not talk about the, I only talk about the environmental deterioration and uh, what are the worsening things happen in Mizoram. I will not discuss about the remedial measures and the strategies for the conservation plan, because which is beyond, actually, which is beyond the concept of my topic due to that reason. Please do not treat me as a pessimist. Okay. So I go to my topic. When we're talking about the land degradation, we are not talking about the soil only. We are also talking about the forest condition and also talk about the water condition in Bizora also. So all of those, the soil. The, I mean, the forest, the water condition, and the soil conditions will be discussed today. So, so 
sorry. Just a minute. Okay, is it visible, ma'am? This am I audible or not? Yes, sir, sir. You are audible. Okay, thank you. So when we talking about the land degradation, one of the most prominent organizations regarding the land degradation, they are the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification, UNCCD. Okay. They describe the land as a terrestrial bioproductive system that comprises soil, vegetation, other biota, and the ecological and hydrological processes that operate within the system. And its degradation as the reduction or loss in arid, semi-arid, and the dry subhumid areas of the biological or economic productivity and the complexity of the rain-fed cropland, irrigated cropland, and rain spacer, forest, and the woodlands resulting from the land uses or from a process or combination of processes including processes arising from the human activities and habitation patterns such as the soil erosion caused by the wind and, or the water and deteriorations of the physical, chemical, and biological or economic properties of soil and long-term loss of natural vegetation. As we see this definition, most prominent definition given by the UNCCD, we might not be included our region because they are only concentrated about uh, in the areas of the arid, that means a desert, and the semi-arid, semi-desert, and the dry subhumid areas. Uh, that's why we might need to make uh, search for the another definition. See, Young in his book now, uh, Land Resources Now and for the Future, in published in 1988, right like this, ex explained the land degradation as the temporary or permanent lowering of the productivity of the land due to natural and anthropogenic activities, which include various forms like erosion and soil fertility decline, deforestation, and adverse impact on water resources. On the basis of the definition given by the young, so we can include Mizoram uh, have been facing as a land degradation. Then the World Meteorological Organization, in their book, The Climate and Land Degradation, published in 2005, they state that the causes of land degradation are not only biophysical. Okay. Uh, but also the socio-economic and the political also. That means all of the activities of the human, anthropogenic activities, all of the human anthropogenic activities are, can be included in the cause of the land degradation. They are the facilitator, actually. So according to the Morgan, okay, according to the Morgan, he accused land degradation as a hazard. Okay, especially in the tropical and the semi-arid region, because it is a traditionally associated with agriculture practices and is reasonable for its long-term effect on soil productivity and sustainable agriculture. So actually in Mizoram, as you know, land degradation started since the beginning of the agriculture practices because we have been facing uh, we have been practicing uh, shifting cultivation since time immemorial. So due to its location advantages, Mizoram receives a good amount of annual rainfall and would strongly support the recovering period of the fallow period. And that means recovering period of the forest regeneration cycle, okay, or cycling period of the shifting, uh, shifting cultivation. Therefore, the land degradation might not be a problem in the previous centuries. But in the 21st, 21st century, in our century, so land degradation problem can be shown through the signs and the appearances and, and the data recorded by the different organizations and the departments also. So most of the, dat uh, most of the departments and the organizations, they are collected the data uh, and another documents. Okay, they collected the documents and the data for uh, regarding this land degradation. So let's go to the next slide. As you need the slide, land degradation has 
both on-site and the off-site effect. On-site effect, uh, lowering of productivity or reducing output like crop yield, livestock or forest production or required for increasing inputs to give back for the losses. On the basis of um, the, the data recorded by the concerned department of Mizoram, maybe agriculture or maybe horticulture also, maybe other department also, uh, they, when we took, uh, when we go on to their records, there is no decline in the production of the horticulture and the animal husbandry also and the agriculture also. But this might be the reason of the improvement of the technology and the processes. But in the initial, uh, in the actual phases, it might not be like that. In the record, yes, it is, uh, the record is good, but there is no decline in the production. But in the actual cases, it might not be. That's for the challenging of the uh, geographers or maybe for the young generations. And when you're talking about the offsite effect, it refers predominantly to the change in river flow, water quality, and sedimentation as about, as brought about by the deforestation and the consequences of the erosion. So when you look at the data recorded by the, uh, regarding the natural resources like a uh, forest record, water record, and the soil condition also, we can clearly confirm that we are experiencing the offside effect of land degradation in Mizoram. See, this is the data given by the desertification and land atlas, land degradation atlas of India, uh, volume one, which was published in 2016 by ISRO. Uh, they observed that Mizoram. 8.8 uh, uh, they observed with 8.89%, as you've seen in the slide, I hope you can see the slide, 8.89% of the total geographical area and the land degradation in 2011 to 13. The land degradation area in Mizoram has increased about 4.34 since 2003 to 2005 for the assessment period of eight years. Okay, the latest report cover up to 2018-19, uh, also published by the ISRO in 17 June 2021. But unfortunately, we cannot access the data yet. I hope it will be free access soon. Uh, it will so there may be a higher rate of land degradation or may result lower rate of degradation than the previous assessment. I don't know. Uh, let's hope it will, it will be better than the previous assessment. As seen in the slide, so the, there are three types of degradation in Mizoram. So vegetation degradation, water erosion, and the settlement. Okay, all the trees are there. So I'll show you in detail. This is the different types of land degradation found in Mizoram in the assessment period. So let's proceed to the vegetation degradation only. So during 2003 to 2005 and 2011 to 2013 assessment. So as shown in this slide, the degradation area in kilometer is the red one, okay. 818.54 square kilometer, which is vegetation degradation found in 2003 to five, and in 2011 to 13, which is 1,670.5, which is very, very high, okay. The rate, the change rate is very, very high, which is more than 100%. Vegetation degradation found during only eight, eight years, okay. Then water erosion is not much like a vegetation degradation. Only 9.07% found uh, during eight, uh, eight years. Then settlement, as on in this slide, from 65.75 square kilometer to 122.85, it is almost double also, which is 86.84 percentage change during this assessment period, only during eight years. Then the total, area under land degradation from 958.73 square kilometer in 2003 to 1,874.53 square kilometer in 2011 to 13, which is 95.52 percentage of change in the land degradation. That means the land degradation rate is very, very high. So as shown in the last column, 4.45 in 2003 to 5 to 8.89 uh, in 2011 to 13. That means this is the rate. Okay, it is almost doubled, around 90 something. This is the condition of land degradation in Mizoram, assessed by the um, 
the certification and learn the graduation class. Okay. Not only Mizoram, I would like to show this one, Lungle District. According to the land, the certification and land degradation, the class of India volume two, uh, which was also published in 2016, they highlighted the highest increase in land degradation is observed in Lungle District among all the districts of India. That means we are in the top most land degraded area. We have a top most land degraded district among all the districts of India. Then, which is followed by Aizol. This is the second, okay, the second, the second position among the all districts of India. That means we have two top land degraded air district in India during this assessment period. This is the condition of Mizoram actually. Uh, then let's go to the new slide. This is the conditions of the forest in Mizoram. As you see in this slide, the green one is an increase, then the red one is a decrease. So since 1987 to 9, 2019, during the period of the 20, uh, 32 years, so I hope you, you can see the slide. So 1989 decrease, 1991 only increase found in 1991, 2003, 2005, and 2009 only, but all the rest are decreasing. So as a whole, for the 22 years, 32 years, 72.40, 72.4 square kilometer loss during these 32 years in the forest of Mizoram. And this is the different classification, uh, different classifications of uh, for, forest types. Okay, so the first column is a total forest cover in square kilometer since 2005. This is the last decade only. So I, I'm showing the last decade only. So if you see the table, the first column only, since 2009, the forest cover is decreasing. Then the forest cover change in square kilometer, 66 square kilometer change in 2009 to 2011 during uh, the assessment period. Uh, then 63 in 2011 to 13, and 306 in 2003 to 2015 and 531 square kilometer in 2015 to 2017 and 180 in during 2017 to 2019. This is the condition, okay, the actual conditions of the forest in Mizoram. Then the average in percentage, it is decreasing. What I would like to mention is that uh, different types of the uh, forest cover. See, as already mentioned by the, our honorable minister, so forest types are divided into three, very dense forest, moderately dense forest in the open forest in the last three column. So as you see the very dense forest, it is it's look like increasing, but the increasing rate is very, very low. Then the moderately dense forest, it is decreasing also. Hello, am I audible? As I see in the chat box, it is not clear. Hello? Yeah, you properly from here. Okay, thank you, Miss. So regarding the open forest, see, as you see in the brown color, the open forest increases. Okay, the open forest increases without changing the other two types. That means this shows that the land degradation happened uh, during this year also. Then from 2015 to 2019 also, it's decreasing. So that means as you see the total forest cover in percentage during the last decade, you have been facing the deforestation, the, the high rate of deforestation in Mizoram. And this is the forest cover of Mizoram, the latest data published by the State of Forest Report by Forest Survey of India. Very dense forest is only 0 0.74, which is less than one percentage only around 157 square kilometer, as already mentioned by the uh, Honorable Minister, we have only 28, okay, around 29, around 29 percentage of the thick dense, uh, thick forest in Mizoram, then the rest are open forest. Okay, as shown in this slide, then I'll proceed. So next slide. Then this is the district-wise forest cover loss in Mizoram in square 
kilometer as see in this slide isol it loses then average is also loss since the uh, the last decade uh, and champai also loses and the average is also loss and the uh, colossal district also loses in average also and long tai is increasing seems increasing okay look like increasing but actually it's not i'll show you later in the later slide then the lunglei district also in, uh, look like increasing then the mabe district decreasing then the saiha district is also it seems uh, increasing then the sachi district increasing so let's give a priority to the longtai district lunglei saiha and sachi district in the next slide as you see in this slide very regarding the very dense forests in mizoram please look at the longtai so there is no dense forest cover in longtai since 2005 they doesn't have a square kilometer okay then lunglei district also they almost doesn't have okay the very dense forest cover then the saiha more or less similar with the longtai uh, longtai and the lunglei then the sachi district is uh, they have a very high potential of uh, increasing the forest resources now also they are in a good condition uh, among the districts of mizoram and that's all about the forest condition uh, and the uh, deforestation rate uh, deforestation condition in mizoram then let's go let's proceed to the annual rainfall condition of mizoram see this is the record uh, collected from the meteorological data of mizoram and the agriculture department also since 1986 up to 2020 if you see this uh, if you see this trends which is the red broken line so on the on the basis of this data so we can we can clearly say that the annual average annual rainfall is decreasing okay annual rainfall is decreasing in in every decade i'll show you later in the in the slide as you see in this slide okay please uh, as you see in this slide between 1991 to 2000 the average annual rainfall is 2541.1 uh, which is in millimeter but after decade in 2001 to 2010 it's decreased with 47.83 millimeter which is only 200 2493.27 in 2001 to 2010 in the latest decade between 2011 to 2020 as you, as you see in this slide it reduces more than the previous decade which is 305.43 mm reduces from the previous uh, decade okay so it clearly shows that the rainfall condition it clearly shows that the rainfall this is the uh, diagram the line graph of the decadal annual rainfall so we can i hope we can clear about the conditions of the rainfall in mizoram i hope it will be discussed later by the sir gabriel in the after this technical session so this is the real picture of our rainfall condition during 30 years okay the degradation rate is very very high then this is the groundwater level in this era for 2 years groundwater depletion survey report 2020 uh, prepared by the groundwater resource assessment cell uh, phe department government of mizoram they observed that the level of groundwater is consistent with a depth ranging from 8.8 to 13.25 meter below the ground level and the rate of decadal depletions of the groundwater in mizoram is 0.5 meter that is one and a half feet during uh, one decade okay and where the depletions of the groundwater during the pre monsoon season is 0.32 meter and uh, post monsoon is 0.57 during the last decade so as as shown in this slide I hope you can understand about the conditions of the groundwater level. Then, 0.5 meter depletion found in uh, per decade found in Mizoram groundwater condition. Not only the groundwater, surface water also 
that we are facing the problem in the surface water. Uh, this is the river pollution data. According to the Exxon plan for conservation of 90 years in Mizoram prepared by the River Rejuvenation Committee in Mizoram, they have prepared uh, this data. So as you see the slide, the nine major rivers are polluted, which, are, which have been consuming for the drinking water supply. I think this, uh, the conditions of this uh, slide is already mentioned by the Honorable Minister in the previous. So Tio River, Klong River, Pui Pui River, Pui Vol River, Chite River, Mad River, Saika Stream, Pui Kual Stream and the Turiel Stream. All of these major rivers and the streams are polluted. If they are polluted, all of the tributaries of these rivers and the streams can become as a polluted rivers also. And polluted rivers and the polluted streams also. I'll show you the map of the <coughs> polluted uh, rivers. As you see in this slide, so from the eastern side, I talk about the Tio River. I hope you can see this slide. Tio River, Tui Pui River, Chim Tui Pui, and the <coughs> Tui Chang River, Mad River. Okay. Then the De, Kau, and the Tui Ruang River also, Kor Pui River, and the Chim Tui, uh, Kotlang Tui Pui also. And in the western side, in the northwestern side, um, the uh, Langkai River is there, and Tut River, and Klong, and Tui Rial, and Tui Vol, and Tui Vai. All of these measured rivers and the streams are polluted on the basis of the Missouri Revisionation Committee. So, as I already mentioned, if these rivers are polluted, so all of the tributaries, they have a lot of tributaries, so all of the tributaries might become as polluted. Uh, we don't know what, uh, what happened to this condition. Then let's go to the soil property. See, on the base of my research, see, as you know, before, before that, the soil properties, there, there are three properties of the soil, physical properties, chemical properties, and the biological properties. But today we're talking about the physical properties and the physical properties only. See, I've to, I have taken a lot of soil samples from different land, use, land cover uh, of six classes, the very dense forest, as shown in this slide, moderately dense forest, open forest, current shifting cultivation, tree plantation, and the fruit plantation also. With the help of the analysis of varines, which is a statistical tools, so we have been calculated about the conditions of the, the vulnerability zone, uh, vulnerable, uh, vulnerable, uh, vulnerability conditions of the soil property. Okay, uh, so regarding this table, as shown in this slide, the physical properties just proceed only to the physical properties. So when there is a change in the land, land use, I mean, uh, the land use and the land cover, they have a potential change of the bulk density, have a high potential change then, which is 96.4, okay? This is the potential change of the soil properties. And the porosity is also around 96. If there is a change in the land use, so it will automatically change the soil physical properties. The, this is the potential, this is the potential of change, okay? Of soil properties. Then the, regarding the chemical properties, so as you see in this slide, Soil organic carbon and the soil organic water, they have a high potential of change. Then the nitrogen also, and the potassium also, they have a high pot uh, very chance of high potential as shown in this slide. See, this is the condition, the potential of change, change their properties of the soil. Okay, uh, on the basis of the change of the land use, land cover. If there is a, if the land regulation happens, continually comes, so they will change. They will, automatically change their properties. And it might have effect in the agriculture production and it might have a, a effect in the water condition also. Okay, water infiltration due, due to the, these physical properties. So this is the conditions of the soil. Then the foremost important thing is the farmer's perception on land degradation. 
see this this is based on my research also uh, in the 3d water set Mizoram. then uh, around 300 farmers and the prominent person uh, in 29 villages were approached uh, regarding this farmers perception on education so on the basis of uh, their perception okay, okay on the basis of their perception the, regarding the soil erosion they have been experiencing the soil erosion every corner every part of the area uh, in the region then the soil soil erosion severity is a mod, uh, 26 person replied as a moderate and 74 percent as a high severity okay of erosion happened in their land then regarding the erosion increasing 95 percent replied as a increasing erosion in their area then the erosion impact on agriculture production yes 90s 90 more than 90 71 more than 70 percent replied as a high impact on the agriculture production due to erosion then soil fertility declined 98 percent okay they this is the experience of the farmers and the prominent person then regarding the forest uh, they have been facing the deforestation in uh, in their area 100 percent and the severe deforestation now replied by the 98 percent then the increasing distance of the collecting raw material as you know in the Mizo society most of our raw materials for construction of so our buildings our houses and the others also we collected from the our surrounding area so that type of question are ask them so this is the condition of the they replied 100 percent replied that increasing distance of the collecting raw materials then the period of june cycle in karenia this is the the survey period is 2017 to 2020 so in that time okay period of june cycle is five to eight years then the period of june cycle in the 15 years back is 11 to 15 years and the period of june cycle in the 30 years back which is 22 to 28 years that means it's highlighted about the conditions of the forest regeneration period and the forest condition also there is no time for fertiling the land by naturally okay uh, by the forest so as you see in the slide so let's go to let's proceed to the water condition water scarcity 72 percent of the people they are facing the water water scarcity in the in the region and the changing rainfall pattern is very severe 80 percent severe changing rainfall pattern as mentioned by sarkuba also then the river water volumes decrease i mean the discharge 100 percent yes it decreases then the rapidly changes 28 uh, replied by the 28 percent then the water uh, supply satisfaction level in the rural areas also most of the people are not satisfied with their water supply so 64 percent water sub, uh, 64 percent only satisfied in their water uh, supply but the remaining the remaining around 40 percent are not satisfied with water supply then the month of the water scarcity is december to april which is five months in 12 months of one year so it is very very long for mizoram because we, we receive a lot of uh, annual rainfall but among those 12 months the scarcity the amount of the water scarcity is five months which is very very much in mizoram I'm almost finished. Then this is the Forest Survey of India data published by uh, Forest Survey of India, 2019. As you see the, as you saw in this, this slide, the forest condition, the, no, the conditions of Mizoram is classified into five uh, zones. Then as an extremely fire plant zone, very high fire plant zone, uh, fire plant zone and the, uh, highly fire prone zone and moderately fire prone zone and less fire prone zone as you see in this slide i've made as a red color so extremely fire prone zone very high the fire prone zone and highly fire prone zone all of those areas covered 93 percent okay 93 percent of the total geographical area of mizoram under the class of the high fire prone zone some are 29 are extremely then the 38 are very high fire prone zone and they highly fire prone zone at 24.64. 
together with 93.3 percentage of high, uh, high highly fed bronzoderm Mizoram. So that clearly depict that almost all of the Mizoram areas are highly fed bronzoderm during the dry periods. All of these are caused by the land degradation. Actually, this is the consequence of the actual con consequence of the land degradation in Mizoram, and uh, this is the picture that I have shown in the in their book. See, as seen in the picture, most of the extremely fire prone zone concentrated in the western side, in the northwestern side, and in the western side also, maybe in the Long Thai district, uh, Lung Lai district, and the uh, Mami district. But fortunately, uh, the Champai district, so they have a less uh, extremely fire prone zone. The highest is a very high prone zone uh, found in somewhere in the northern side and the, south, uh, the southern side. So this is the condition of the fire prone zone in Mizoram. During, as you see in the uh, previous month, uh, in the last November 2020 to May 2021, uh, during the six months only, the frequency of occurrence of fire in Mizoram is around 4,486. Okay, 4,486 during only six months, in the last six months. Then uh, covering an area of 141.53 square kilometer. That is the real conditions of Mizoram in the fire prone zone. And for the last slide, so I'll try to add up my presentation with the help of this uh, slide. This is the Tlong River data, I've, which are collected from the Department of PHE and some from the newspaper, daily newspaper. So as you see in between 2010, 11, 2012, and the 2013, so the, the average minimum river discharge in a uh, million liter per day, uh, which might come as a one, 1,200 something average. But after eight or seven years, uh, in 2019, it decreased, highly decreased, okay, it decreased to 70.74 and decreased again to 65.97 during one year. And again, 2021, this is the real, con uh, the, uh, the current conditions of Mizoram, 31.46 only, 31.46 milliliter per day, Found, uh, found in the Tong River, which is the biggest and the longest river in the central part of Mizoram. See, if the main river discharge rate is like the uh, main river discharge rate is like like this data, so the uh, the other tributaries, the the fact that is that the other tributaries are also declined. This is the real picture of the conditions of the land degradation and uh, its consequences in our environments. From the previous slide I have, saw, I have mentioned, so we can clearly confirm that the Mizoram have, have a fragile ecosystem and have been experiencing the deteriorations of environment in different ways. For maintaining sustainable environment, it is mandatory or compulsorily needed to stop or reduce the deterioration and make remedial measures and mitigation plan for the future which is the challenge for the young geographer and the students also, and for the other uh, the government departments also. That's all I can present today. Thank you for your responses and your patience to listen to my presentation. Thank you all. Thank you, thank you so much, sir. So Sir have presented to us a very detailed information on how, how uh, a land have been degraded uh, in Mizoram. And uh, if uh, anyone have uh, queries uh, from Sir's presentation, if it's okay, Sir, uh, you can ask uh, questions. Okay, okay. Yes. You can unmute yourself, uh, the participants, please. Uh, if you have queries, you can ask Sir.
It seems like maybe, uh, sorry, your presentation is very clear, I think, uh, uh, very resourceful. Thank you. And, uh, sir, uh, uh, it was very informative. I was uh, listening, listening to it uh, very, very clearly. You were talking about the, uh, the decline in the dense forest uh, uh, and the decline in rainfall, groundwater, surface water, all those things that you've mentioned, sir. I think it's very important for us uh, to uh, have a... Uh, uh, to be more aware on uh, how our land have been degraded so much. Uh, you have, uh, sir, you have uh, studied like more than uh, 30, 30, uh, 30 years uh, of uh, uh, data. Uh, oh, that's uh, very wow, informative, wow. sir, and we are very thankful. Thank I hope you. every one of us uh, are... Okay. Are if there are no questions then uh, again thank you very much sir for your presentation thank you thank you this concludes uh, the webinar of our uh, morning session i hope i will see you all again in the uh, evening session thank you all for attending
Welcome to our second session. Our speaker joining us from Gov uh, Government Jet and Kima College, Gabriel Sandama, Assistant Professor. Sir, Gab Sir Gabby, are you there? Yes. Uh, I okay. Uh, before we invite uh, Sir Gabriel, I would like to state a brief introduction about him. Sir is currently a research scholar at Mizoram University. His topic being uh, climate variability, vulnerability, and social well being in Mizoram. He has presented different papers regarding climate change in state and international uh, level seminars, uh, one of which is uh, analysis of uh, climate variability and agricultural productivity in Mizoram, Northeast India. Uh, he, he was also a visiting faculty at Ikfa University, Dutlang Aizol. Uh, besides this, this he has uh, held important positions such as uh, Vice President uh, at Mizoram University Research Scholars Association, commonly known as Mursa during the year uh, 2019 to 2020. And uh, currently he is the president of uh, Mizoram University Research Scholars Association. And uh, he is currently a committee member of Geographical Association of Mizoram. Uh, now let's invite uh, Sir Gabriel uh, to present his topic. Yes, uh, can, you, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, is my voice audible? Yes, sir, it's audible, it's very clear. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, before I start, I would like to thank the organizing committee of this webinar and then the Department of Geography, Champai Government College. And then a special thanks to Assistant Professor Marima for giving me this opportunity to speak on climate change, which is a very uh, hot debate topic in current situations. So, uh, but then I would like to request the organizing committee if they would allow me to off my video because I'm using a uh, phone data. So this, the, the signal is not that strong. So if I off my video, then maybe it may help in getting a yep. better signal. So I'll just off my video. Okay. So is my screen visible? Yes, sir, it's, it's visible. Okay. <clears throat> okay, let's do it this way. So <clears throat> I'll be presenting on an overview of climate change a case scenario of Mizoram. Okay. So, so understand what is climate change we have two definitions we have two definitions
It seems like Sir Gabriel uh, is currently having an internet connect connection trouble. Uh, I think he is currently retrying, so uh, let's wait for him to uh, come again. Uh, let's wait for him around two to three minutes. Oh, can you can you hear my? Your voice is breaking. Am I audible? Yes, you're audible, but some somehow your voice is breaking. Okay, uh, is it is it is it okay now? Uh, it's better, yes, sir. You can proceed, sir. Okay, okay, it's better now, right? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, I apologize for the. For, for for the inconvenience, uh, my data signal is not that strong today. We understand, sir. It's okay. It's okay. Um, I don't know what is wrong with the Wi-Fi. There's some problem. Okay. So let's start again. Let's continue. So we have two two governing bodies, which have uh, may uh, again. Given, given, uh, which have explained what is climate change. Okay, so yes, yes, uh, sir. Can you put it on uh, your PowerPoint? Can you put it on a uh, full screen mode?
Yes, I have, I have, I have shared it, visible. Uh, uh, no, sir. Uh, Sir Gabriel currently have a uh, technical difficulty, so he's going to shift his location. So please, uh, participants, uh, we have to wait for around 15 minutes for him to come back.
Sarah, are you there? Yes, I'm, I'm here, I'm here. Yes. Nothing we can do now. Yeah, we can, we can continue now. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's continue. <clears throat> Sorry for all the problems. Uh, so uh, I hope the slide is visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's visible. If you could, uh, sir, if you could uh, make it in a full screen. Um... Okay, okay. Okay. So is it full screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. So we have we have climate change, and then uh, we have two governing bodies which are dealing with the study of climate change on a global aspect. So UNF UNF C UNF C is the governing body which studies climate change, and then what they do is like they give. Uh, <clears throat> a global study on climate change and IPCC on behalf of UNFCCC, they give a report. They give a report on the wall. Okay, so just give me one, one minute. So let's understand what is climate change. Okay, so we have two, two definitions. Now, uh, climate change is a natural process. It's a natural process and then it has been happening since uh, thousands of years, since millions of years. So <clears throat> Earth has experienced a lot of change in the last past millions of years. So the scientists have evidences which proves that climate change has been a natural process. So if climate change is a natural process, why do we have to be worried about climate? It has been occurring, so if it has been occurring in the past, and if it is occurring in the present, so why do we have to worry about the climate change? The one main reason why we have to worry about climate change is the human intervention, since the beginning of the industrial civilization, it has paced up the process. It has paced up the process of the natural climatic change, and humans are not capable to cope up with the sudden change on climate and all the adverse effect that it brings along with it. So that is one of the main concern why we have to be worried about climate change. Uh, in 2007, IPCC has given a report. It says that the global, climb, the global surface temperature has increased over 0 0.3 degrees Celsius to 0 0.6 degrees Celsius. That is a very concerned thing because on a global, on a climatological aspect or on a meteorological aspect, even one degree Celsius is a very, it can cause a lot of uh, destructions. It can cause a lot of distractions. It can cause a much more severe cyclonic disturbances. It can cause a lot of uh, anomaly, climatic anomaly on every part of the world. So that is why we are much more concerned about climate change. Why humans have to reduce its different activities which can hamper the climatic, which can hamper or can pace up the climatic, uh, climatic change. So we have two terms out here. 
two different terms, that is weather and climate. Weather and climate are both atmospheric conditions. They are both atmospheric conditions, but then it has a little bit of difference between these two. Weather on one hand, it means all the atmospheric conditions that include the temperature, that include the wind circulations. It also include precipitations, all form of precipitation, rainfall. We have fog, we have dews, all form of atmospheric con conditions in terms of weather. It prevails only for a very short period of time. It can be for one day, it can be for a few hours, it can be for one week. So the process of change of weather is fast. It keeps on changing. But then on the other hand, on the other hand, when you speak of climate, when, does, when you speak of climate, climate is also an atmospheric condition, but then it prevails over a long period of time on a one particular geographical area. So weather, it takes a very short time to change. Climate, it takes a very long period of time to change, and maybe around 50 years, maybe around 30 years, or maybe even around 100 years. It keeps on changing, but then the process of change is very slow. That's why we are learning about climate change, not weather change. So climate change has more impact on the society or human well-being. And one more thing which I would like to add up is that according to the IPCC, in order to study climate change, we need at least 30 years of time series data. So we have to consider at least 30 years in order to study climate change is whether it is occurring or it is not occurring. So the standard limit of climate change study is for 30 years. <clears throat> the next slide is on the difference between global warming and climate change. We have two concepts, that is the global warming and then the next one is the climate change. It's a very common topic, but then people, a lot of people, a lot of public tends to <clears throat> mix up these two terms, global warming and climate change. Uh, I'll give you an example on the differences. Global warming is on a global scale. And as the name suggests, global warming, it is the warming of the earth due to greenhouse gases. For example, we have carbon dioxide, then we have methane and other greenhouse gases, which are responsible for the increase of temperature, for the increase of temperature globally. So when you speak of global warming, it only implies to the increase of temperature. It only increases to the increase of temperature globally. There are different variables of climate. We have temperature, we have rainfall, we have humidity, we have uh, different forms of precipitation. But then when we speak of global warming, it implies only to temperature and it only means that there is a positive or increase in the rate of temperature. Whereas when you speak of climate change, it is not only temperature, it also includes precipitation. So there's a change on temperature as well as precipitation and the different forms of climatic conditions, even wind circulations are included under climate change. So <clears throat> when you say climate change and global warming, like we have mentioned just now that under global warming, the temperature increases globally. It increases globally. And then on the climate change, some parts of the world may be affected by the increase of temperature. Some parts of the world, some parts of the region may have high temperature, but then some parts of the world may have a very cold temperature. Some parts of the world may have very high rainfall from its mean 
rainfall. Some parts of the world may experience a sudden high rainfall, whereas some parts of the world may have experiencing a loss of rainfall or reduction of rainfall. So that is the difference between global warming and climate change. I'll give you another example. <clears throat> uh, in recent time, you must have heard in the news that Europe and China is being affected by sudden flood. A lot of people are losing their life, have lost their life. A lot of public infrastructures have been damaged. And in Europe and China is being affected by high amount of flood. Whereas on the other part of the world, whereas on the other part of the world in Canada, you must have seen in news in Canada, Canada is being hit by heat wave. They are not experiencing high rainfall, but then in, they are experiencing in terms of high temperature heat wave and it's killing a lot of people. So the effect of climate change can be, it, it can vary from temperature to rainfall. So if we are saying that, what proof do we have to say that climate change is occurring? So the scientists have gathered a lot of evidences a lot of evidences which can prove that climate change has occurred. And just in case, if you if we do not know the person on this slide right now, here's Bill Nyer. He's a scientist, he's an American scientist. And then he's trying his best to advocate for climate change. And he's trying his best to give more awareness on climate change and the impact the potential impact climate change possess. So let's look at some of the <clears throat> evidences which scientists have gathered and they become an empirical evidence, an empirical evidence to prove that climate change has occurred. You can see on this graph, this graph represents the amount of carbon dioxide on the atmosphere. The graph represents the amount of carbon dioxide on the atmosphere. Uh, can you see this mouse cruiser? Let me know if you can see the mouse cruiser, the mouse pointer. So is the mouse pointer visible? No, no, sir. Okay, is it visible now? No, yes, yes. Okay. So when you look at the graph, you can see that there is a monotonic trend. There's a monotonic trend. Monotonic means up and down characteristics of trend lines. So you can see up and down. So this, this line represents the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And they have traced the amount of carbon dioxide up to 600 million years. Scientists have gathered data on the amount of carbon dioxide up to 600 million years in the past. So why is carbon dioxide very important? Carbon dioxide is very important because the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere shows the temperature of the earth or the temperature of the atmosphere. The higher the, the, higher the amount of carbon dioxide, the warmer the temperature, the lesser the amount of carbon dioxide, the colder the temperature. So the amount of carbon dioxide have increased and decreased through time. Since millions of years, it has increased through time. And then the process is very gradual. It takes a million years to change from low level to the high level. And whenever there's a low level, there's always an ice age. So if, you, if we have studied climatology, we have learned that Earth has experienced seven ice ages. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven ice age. So Earth has experienced seven ice age based on the carbon dioxide amount in the atmosphere. So this proof that Earth has experienced climate change. But then if you look at this particular trend here, this is today, the present time where all the carbon dioxide, all the methane gases are being produced through industries and all. 
and then the amount of the carbon dioxide has increased. It has increased and then it is giving a very potential impact on the natural process of climate change. The trend line of the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has increased a lot drastically. So how does the scientists collect this data? You can see in this picture, this is known as the ice core process. In the glacier areas, what scientists does is they drill inside the glaciers up to, up to 100 meters, up to 200 meters. And then the deeper it goes, the deeper the depth, the more backward you go into time. So ice are made out of water, solid water. And between those solid waters, what happened is like sometimes gas used to get trapped. So what they do is like they extract the gas out of this ice core. And those gases contains the amount of carbon dioxide on them. So the amount of carbon dioxide reveals the past conditions of climate on Earth's history. So this is one process of how scientists can trace back Earth's history and can know that there has been a climate change, a natural process of climate change. Then we have the another proof. Another proof is the melting of glaciers with increase in temperature since the dawn of the industrial civilization, there's an increase of temperature. And with increase of temperature, it is melting the glaciers in the North Pole and as well as, as in the South Pole. And then this is a living evidence. It is a living evidence. And then we can see it right now how much glaciers has been melted through the increase in global warming. And this all have a potential adverse effect on social well-being of humans. Then we have another evidences which we are experiencing within this year itself only, bizarre climate anomalies. When you say bizarre climate anomalies, when you say anomalies, it means that when the climate starts to acting very strange, when the climate has a very mean and medium trend, and suddenly there's a intense change on the climatic conditions. When a, when a particular place is having a very moderate type of temperature, suddenly it has a very high temperature, or if a place is having a very moderate type of rainfall, suddenly it loses all its rainfall and it becomes totally dry. So that process, we call it as the climate anomalies. And we can see in the recent news, on the recent international and local news, we can see that China, Europe, and as well as the North America, Canada, is experiencing a very strange climatic anomalies. China is experiencing flood, then North America, Canada is experiencing heat wave, which is more deadly, okay, 115 times, 150 times more deadly. So these are all the, all the evidences which can show that climate change is really occurring. And it is really having an adverse effect on humans. So that is one thing we have, I have covered on the uh, general ideas on what climate change is all about. I hope we have understand what climate change is all about. Then now we can enter into the scenario of climate change in Mizoram. Okay, so climate change in Mizoram. According to some studies, according to some studies, it shows that climate change is much more effective in mountainous areas, which suggests that population or societies or indigenous people who are residing in the mountainous regions 
are more affected by the climate change. So why is it so? Why is it so that people living in the mountains are being affected more by the adverse effect of climate change? The mountainous people are all indigenous people. Their lifestyle, their agricultural practice are all traditional. They are all traditional. They are not using any mechanized system of agriculture. So their process of living or their living standard is very low. Their life practice is very traditional. So they are much more vulnerable to the effects of climate change. And when you speak of Mizoram, Mizoram is a mountainous place. It's a mountainous place and the whole people of Mizoram, the whole population of Mizoram belongs to a mountainous region. And being Mizos, we all know that our lifestyle is very indigenous and is very traditional. So <clears throat> the whole economy of Mizoram is totally dependent, let's say not whole, but then 60% of the 60 percent of the state's economy is totally dependent on agriculture. So agriculture is our lifeline. And climate change has very high potential to affect agriculture sectors. So <clears throat> Mizoram has also been divided into different agricultural sub agroclimatic zones, that is the humid mild tropical hill zones, then you have the humid tropical hill zones, and then the humid temperate sub alpine zone. So the humid sub temperate alpine zone are the areas which falls under the eastern side of the Mizoram state that include the district of Champai. So this is based on the elevation, based on the temperature, and as well as the types of agriculture practice in those areas. Then Mizoram has also been divided into four seasons, according to the Metrological Department of ISOL. It divides this climate of Mizoram into four seasons. The first one is the winter season that falls from November to January. Then we have spring, which is from February and April, summer, which is May to August, and autumn from September to October. So this divisions of seasons will take into consideration. And I have done some analysis on climate change based on annual as well as seasonal. So we'll know what changes have occurred in the past historical time on the climatic system of Mizoram. So methodologies which I have used to analyze whether climate change has been occurring or not. First, I have studied the climatic parameters that is the rainfall and temperature. And all the temperature and rainfall data has been collected from meteorological department Department of Agriculture, Department of Economic and Statistics. So I have combined all the data because there were some missing data. There were some missing data. So in order to fill up those missing data, I have to compile with other source of data. Then the, the non-parametric statistical analysis of man candle and sand slope is widely accepted by different researchers in order to study climate change. It gives a very wide understanding and a very uh, empirical result to prove that climate change is occurring. And then I have used some other statistical techniques and IDW with the help of ArcGIS. So this is on temperature. This is the temperature trend of Mizoram and Isol district. On your left side, you can see a table. And on your right side, you can see another table. The left side is represents the Mizoram, the Mizoram state as a whole, the temperature trend. And it is from 1986 to 2015. 
Whereas on the right side, you can see the temperature trend of ISOL district. That is from 90, 1986 to 2020, which is five years more than Mizoram data. So in this trend, you can notice that you can notice that the month of June, July, the month of July, August, September, October, and November, as well as December, has increased temperature. The minus sign represent a decrease in temperature or a moderate temperature. The plus signs where there's no minus sign, it represents the increased trend in temperature. So we can say that in 30 years, that is from 1986 to 2015, there has been an increase in temperature. There has been an increase in temperature in Mizoram and in the district of Aizol, where the data is more. It is more than Mizoram. The data I have collected is more than Mizoram. That is from 1986 to 2020. We can see that there has been a very drastic change the increase of temperature has increased a lot in the last 35 years in Aizol district. January, uh, one thing you have to notice is that this star marks, this star marks which represent in this table, it represents the stat statistical significance, statistical significance. Uh, three, three marks, three star marks represent the 99% confidence. That shows that our hypothesis of climate change in Mizoram and in the district of Aizol shows that in the month of January, since the last 35 years, the temperature has increased a lot and then the hypothesis is 99% true. And there's only 1% which is false. So 99% true. And then this is 95%. So we can see that there has been a lot of change. <clears throat> As we have very less data on the whole state of Mizoram, we'll be concentrating on the district of Aizol, how much change has been there. In the last 35 years, in the last 35 years, the average temperature of Aizol district is 26.9 degrees Celsius. And the highest recorded temperature in the last 35 years was recorded in 2018. In the year 2018, it was recorded the highest temperature with 29 degrees Celsius. That is almost 30 degrees Celsius. And that is difference of five degrees Celsius from the lowest recorded annual average temperature in 1990, a difference of five degrees Celsius. That is a huge difference. Then there has been an increase of 0 0.5 degrees Celsius in the five de as a whole in the last 35 years, there has been an increase of 0 0.5 degrees Celsius in the last 35 years. So this increase of temperature can have a lot of effect on the agricultural system, on the health issues, especially on the malaria, because malaria is totally dependent on the climatic conditions of a particular place. And then one thing which we have to understand is that we are speaking of climate change and global warming. In Mizoram, two of the hottest years two of the hottest years in last 35 years in the district of Aizol, two of the hottest year in the last 35 years falls in this same decade. That is from 2010 to 2020. That is 2018 records the highest temperature that is 29 degrees Celsius and followed by 2017, the year 2017 with 28.6 degrees Celsius. So, global warming and climate change increase in temperature is actually being experienced in Mizoram and in the district of Aizol. We can see this graph out here. 
this graph represents the trend line of Mizoram and Izone. Mizoram, like stated before, we have very less data, so it doesn't give a very much empirical evidence. But then when you look at the district of Izone, you can see a trend line out here. It is facing upwards. That means there's a positive trend in the increase of temperature. So since 35 years from 1986 till 2020, the temperature is gradually increasing. This shows that the temperature is, the climate change is really occurring in the state of Mizoram. Then this is the trend analysis of rainfall. Previous speaker, Sir Tripia, he have explained that in Mizoram, we have been experiencing a decline of rainfall. So in order to support his statement, I can show you this graph or this table. It shows that you can see the trend of Mizoram. It shows all negative values. There's a negative values in all of the months of rainfall in Mizoram, as well as in the district of Aizol, it also shows the negative values. So it means that since last 35 years of rainfall in Mizoram, we are experiencing reduction or reduce in the amount of rainfall. This is the graph which represents the trend of rainfall in Mizoram. You can see the trend line, the dark trend line. This is the sense estimator, which represents the trend line. You can see the trend line somewhere in the middle. It is pointing downwards. That shows that the rainfall trend in Mizoram is decreasing. <clears throat> now, Some of the important points to notice. The average rainfall in the last 35 years in Mizoram shows 201.2 millimeters. And then the highest recorded annual average rainfall source in 2017 with 22.226.1 millimeter. The month of June, the month of June, the month of June, the month of June in 2017 records the highest monthly average rainfall of 534.1 millimeter, followed by 2019, July, the highest rainfall was recorded of 400 meters. So I'll repeat again, 2017 June, the month of June in 2017 records the highest monthly average rainfall that is 534.1 millimeter. And then in the year of 2019, the month of July records the highest rainfall with monthly average of 400 millimeters. Okay, so this bizarre anomaly, while we are saying that, while we are saying that rainfall is decreasing in a continuous trend, but then there are some occasion there are some occasion where Mizoram as a whole is receiving a, receiving a sudden high amount of rainfall. That is what we call as rainfall or climatic anomaly. And that is the outcome of climate change. And this increase of rainfall in the month of June in 2017 and in the month of July in 2019 has resulted into this. If you still remember, if you still remember Mizoram, the area of Saira in 2017 experienced a flash flood. Out of a sudden, there was a flash flood. And then a lot of houses were evacuated from the river bank of Klong areas in the Sairang areas. And then the Indian news reports that Mizoram faced the worst flood in 50 years. So this is one example 
of climatic anomaly which we are experiencing in Mizoram. And that is one empirical evidence once again, which shows that climate change is really occurring in Mizoram. <clears throat> you can see this map out here. This map represents the spatial distribution of rainfall. On the left side, on the left side represents the map of Mizoram. And we are doing a webinar by the college, by the government college of Champai. So I thought I should show some uh, evidences that there is changes on the Champai district as well. On the right side, we can see the district of Champai. On the right side, we'll come first with the right side. The year is from 1986 to 2018. That is 32 years. So from 1986 to 2013, 32 years, I have divided 32 years into eight groups. From 1986 to 1993 groups, 1994 to 2001 groups, to 2002 to 2009 group, and 2010 to 2018. Vice versa with the same with Champai district. I've divided into different groups. So you can see that in the rainfall distribution of Mizoram. From 1986 to 1993, the central parts of Mizoram, that is the Aizol district, then the Lungle district, and parts of Champai and parts of Longklai areas was receiving very high amount of rainfall. The central part received very extreme amount of high amount of rainfall. And time as time passes by, as the years goes by, the amount of rainfall which have been receiving in Mizoram has drastically reduced. In the last year group, that is from 2010 to 2018, you can see that the southern part of Mizoram, that is the district of Saiha and Siaha, the district of Siaha and Longklai, has received very less rainfall as compared to the first stage that is from 1986 to 1993. The same goes with the district of Champai. In the district of Champai, in the first stage from 1998 to 2002, the northern parts of Champai district was receiving high amount of rainfall. And this, there has been a shift. The high amount of rainfall area has shifted towards the middle part and towards the eastern part of Champai district bordering with Myanmar. So this shift of rainfall, this distribution shift of rainfall can have an adverse effect, can have an adverse effect on the agriculture system of Mizoram, as well as the agriculture system of Champai. Another thing, Another analysis, what I have done is on the rainfall anomaly index. The rainfall anomaly index shows which year in a time period, in a time series, in a time series, which year <clears throat> is under extremely wet, extremely wet, or you call it as extremely humid, or we call it as extremely dry. So I have analyzed the 35 years of rainfall, the 35 years of rainfall in Mizoram. And then it has given a very uh, satisfying evidence that Mizoram is gradually facing decrease of rainfall and we are into much more, becoming a much more climatically drier state. So it has given different ranges from zero to two, two to four, all the positive values represent the wet and humid years and all the negative values represent the dry, the dry, the dry years. So this is the results which I have <clears throat> observed the rainfall anomaly index of Mizoram from 1986 to 2020. This is the annual, 
and the remaining four are the seasons. In the annual, you can see or you can also observe that if you look at the total number of years, that is 35 years, majority of the years are falling in the negative values. That means that the years in Mizoram, we are facing very dry years. And then since 2017, since 2017, that was the last year when we received ample amount of rainfall. Since 2017, the preceding years, we are receiving very less rainfall and we are facing very dry situation in the state of Mizoram. The spring, in the spring, you can see that high number of years falls under the dry years, extremely dry years. The summer and the autumn saw somewhat uh, a moderate, a moderate values between the dry years and the and then the wet years, but then we have to notice these two seasons, the spring and winter season. Okay, so let's notice the spring and winter season. In the spring season, we have experienced high number of years falling under dry, very, very dry years, extremely dry years. And in the winter, we have in the month of winter, that is from the month of November, December, and January. And spring is from February, March, and April. So you can see the number of years is falling more towards the dry, extremely dry years. Now it has, <clears throat> from this graph, we can say that Mizoram is, is experiencing loss in rainfall. Eventually we are experiencing dry climatic condition. And what is the adverse effect? What effect does it possess on the condition, on the living, living condition of people in Mizoram. So this is the evidence, or we can say that this is the negative effects we have been facing. All these news headlines, <clears throat> all these news headlines, <clears throat> we are experiencing this year, within this year, in the month of March and April, Mizoram was having the highest amount of forest fire, wild forest fire in different parts of Mizoram. That is Long Klai, Saiha, even in the district of some parts of Aizol, district of Aizol, we were experiencing forest fire. Why do we have forest fire? The main reason why we have forest fire, beside the slash and burn agricultural practice, beside the slash and burn, shifting agriculture, which use this slash and burn practice, Beside that one particular reason, the main particular reason, reason is that we can see that our climatic condition in Mizoram is facing more towards dry, extremely dry in the spring and especially in the winter. So if this condition keeps on continuing for another five years, another three years, Mizoram will be much more vulnerable to the effects of wildfire, to the effects of scarcity of drinking of water, drying up of spring water. All this collectively, we can say that Mizoram is very vulnerable to the effects of climate change. And in one of the report, it says that in the year 2020, Mizoram reported 1,300 forest fire. That is a very high number of forest fire for one small state. Then the another effect, I'm almost about to finish, just two, just two three slides more. <clears throat> In the another effects of climate change, we have to consider health and agriculture because Agriculture is the backbone of our economy. We, our economy is totally dependent on agriculture and climate change has the highest effect on agriculture. And secondly, health, malaria. 
Mizoram is very well prone to the effects of malaria because a lot of a lot of areas in Mizoram falls under the low lying areas where uh, the cases of malaria is very high. So Mizoram, you can see here, Mizoram has doubled. Mizoram has doubled its cases of malaria in 2019. In 2019, as compared to 2018, that is <clears throat> from, from 3,937 cases of malaria, we have recorded 8,543 cases of malaria, almost the double, more than the double in 2019. And we'll explain how the climate plays an important role. Mizoram is a serious, is having a serious public health concern in case of malaria. So malaria in malaria cases in Mizoram are mainly caused by two parasites. That is, one is P. falciparium, and then the another one is. P. vivax. So these are the two species of parasites which is highly affecting the people in Mizoram with the cases of malaria. In this study, this present study which we I have shown you here, in this study, I have, we have observed that on an average of on an average per year, 1.1% of the total population are being affected by malaria. So with increase in temperature, we have discussed in the previous slide that the temperature is increasing. Malaria is totally dependent on the climatic condition. With increase in temperature, it increase on the breeding grounds, the breeding period of malaria parasites. I'll explain a little bit more on this one. This is the rainfall and humidity, the correlation between human and rainfall, uh, humidity and rainfall. The bar represents the rainfall, and then the trend lines represent the humidity. So whenever there is an increase in rainfall, there is always increase in humidity. This is the average rainfall. Okay. So in one of the study, in one of the research study of malaria, it shows that. The parasite of malaria, the P. falciparium and the P. vivax, with an increase in temperature from 30 degree, 33 degrees Celsius to 39 degrees Celsius, it limits the development of the parasites. That means once the temperature is 33 degree, or once the temperature increases above 33 degrees Celsius, the parasite there is a limit in the development of parasite. So what we can say is that the favorable climatic condition or the favorable temperature range for the parasite to breed more rapidly, more increasing case is from 33 degrees Celsius. That is from the range of 30 to 33. And in the previous slide, we have, so, we have shown that the temperature of Isol district and Mizoram as a whole has increased and then the highest recorded temperature has reached 30 degrees Celsius, 29.1 degrees Celsius. In the round figure, we can say 30 degrees Celsius. So the more the increase in temperature, more the, temp more the cases of malaria will be occurring in different parts of Mizoram. <clears throat> this is the multi multi-regression analysis of climatic variables and malaria. We can say the R square value out here shows 36.36. So we can say that 36% of all the of all the total cases of malaria in Mizoram, 36% can be attributed can be attributed to rainfall and humidity. So rainfall and humidity plays a very important role 
in determining the cases of malaria in all of Mizoram. So these are the scatter plots of rainfall and hum relative humidity. In rainfall, you can say that if a particular place or a region receive 25 to 27, 25 to 27 millimeters of rainfall, that is most favorable for the parasites to breed. And we have the highest number of cases in this particular range. The same thing with the relative humidity. 80% of relative humidity, 80% of relative humidity is very favorable for the cases of malaria to develop in a particular region. So this is the second last slide. I'm almost about to finish. Ginger production. Ginger is a very important cash crop in Mizoram. It ranks the fifth in the country. Mizoram ranks fifth in the country. And it brings a lot of economy, a lot of income to the state's economy. And ginger is one particular crop, which is very, very determined by the temperature range. You can see here, temperature, a temperature ranging from 29, 29 to 29.5 degrees Celsius, 29 to 25 degrees Celsius, is very favorable for the cultivation of ginger cash crops. If the temperature is reduced, if the temperature becomes very cold, the production is not that favorable. If the temperature exceeds 30 degrees Celsius, the temperature is not favorable again. So the perfect range of temperature is 29 degrees Celsius. So we have to maintain, we have to maintain this particular temperature by, by different climate change policies given by the government. So this is my, this is my last slide. Recommendation for meeting of challenges of climate change studies in Mizoram. <clears throat> what steps can we take in order to combat climate change or in order to combat the effects of climate change? Because we have already discussed that Mizoram as being a mountainous area 100% of the population belong to an indigenous tribe. We are much more vulnerable to the effects of climate change. So these are some points. The first point is adequate climate data access by the government sectors. In order to study climate change, we need an ample supply of data. I am, <clears throat> I am, presently currently doing a research on climate in Mizoram and then the effects that it possess on different variables such as landslide, such as health, such as agriculture sector. One main, one main challenge which I face in studying climate change and its effect in Mizoram is the lack of data. Government have different sectors, have different departments the public health department, the agriculture department. So <clears throat> the government should realize the importance of climate change and then they should prioritize in collecting data in a very adequate form so that researchers can have an ample supply of data for a much more empirical analyzing of the effects which is being experienced in Mizoram. The next one is more campaign on climate change awareness program for public. The government or the policy makers should come up more campaigns, more awareness on the effects of climate change, the challenges of climate change in the state of Mizoram. If I am not wrong, I don't want to be very sure, but then, if I'm not wrong, the last awareness program on climate change in the state of Mizoram hosted by the government was in the year of 2019. It's been almost two years. 
the government should give more priority to the effects of climate change and should give more awareness programs to the public. Then the third one is very important. The third one is very important. There should be a joint partnership between the government institute and educational research institutes. The joint venture, this joint venture can bring a much more understanding of the condition of climate in Mizoram. And we can combat the effect of climate change in a more effective, effective manner. Then the last one is partnership and adaptability. Whatever we have studied, whatever we have analyzed, whatever we have researched about the climate change in Mizoram and all the potential effects of climate change, the government should <clears throat> forward this to different sectors of the government and all the policy makers. And all those policy makers should practically, should practically put forward all those adaptive strategies in order to combat climate change. So that is all I can give a presentation on the overview of climate change in Mizoram. Thank you very much for listening. And I would once again thank the organizing committee for giving me this opportunity to speak on climate change. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, sir for your resourceful and detailed information that you have uh, presented. I hope everyone uh, have enjoyed your resourceful presentation, sir. And um, sir have uh, uh, made me understand the difference between uh, climate change and uh, uh, global warming. I, because we use this term uh, interchangeably and uh, sir have, uh, uh, declare, uh, explained it very uh, well. And uh, I think all of us uh, un, uh, are able to understand what he's saying. And uh, if uh, there are any questions from the participants, uh, Sar will uh, answer it. Uh, you can uh, unmute, your, uh, unmute yourself. Uh, Sar will answer uh, any questions that you have. Meanwhile, uh, I, uh, I really, I'm really thankful to Sir Gabriel because he have uh, done a very uh, good job uh, in uh, collecting data, an enormous data of rainfall uh, for uh, 35 years. Uh, I think, sir, you have done a very good job in uh, collecting those enormous data. Uh, we very much appreciate it. And from him, we, uh, uh, we know, we, we are aware that uh, uh, the climate uh, in Mizoram have changed uh, for, uh, during the past 30 years to 0 0.5 uh, Celsius. That's very much uh, informative. If uh, any questions are there, Sarah is ready to answer. Please unmute yourself uh, if you have any queries regarding his presentation. Okay, ma'am, may I ask? Yes. Hello. Please. Okay, um, Gloria, I, <clears throat> so uh, that was a nice, uh, very informative presentation. What I would ask, want to ask is a very simple one. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> the steps that we, that one take, uh, uh, let us say very privately, uh, uh, water very cautiously or uh, reducing our use of plastic, uh, so, uh, all those uh, all those things, let us just say that uh, that steps that we take personally. Uh, so, uh, is that effective? Is that is that an effective step to reduce to uh, to solve this climate change? Okay, uh, <clears throat> I'll answer to that. Uh, see, uh, climate change. When you say climate change, or even global warming, it is a very collective 
collective effort. When we say collective effort, that means every individual have equal importance, not only the government, not only the international organization, but every individual have a very equal role in, in uh, reducing the effects of climate change. Uh, let's, I'll give you a very simple answer. Climate change, it's a global effect. Global warming is also a very global effect. What we do, what we do here, if we say that we are planting more trees, we are planting more trees, we are reducing deforestation, we are reducing the practice of slash and burn cultivation in Mizoram. It doesn't mean that only the state of Mizoram will be safe from climate change because the whole climate is a global phenomena. When you say monsoon, when you say monsoon, it travels all the way from the Indian Ocean. It travels all the way to north, to the southern part of India. It also affects Africa. It also affects some part of Southeast Asia. It also affects India. So whatever we are experiencing in Mizoram right now, all this temperature, all these wind circulations is a global scale. So what we are doing, what we are doing, all the statistics or uh, strategies we are doing in order to combat the climate change individually also, it can somehow give a positive effect someone somewhere in any other parts of the world. I hope my answer is satisfying. Yes, 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 it is. Yes, please uh, go on and ask questions. Yeah, you can even ask him in uh, Mizo. Mizo Is uh, there any more questions? It seems like, uh, I think, sir, there uh, are no more questions. OK. Thank you again, sir, uh, for answering uh, the questions and for your great presentation. We very much appreciate it. And uh, it was a pleasure to have you with us, sir. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Thank you very much. So uh, this concludes our session. Thank you all for attending.